Hey guys, Hans here. This is my channel and today we are going to go ahead and put the electric hub on this thing, get the wiring done, get the brakes done and get the battery on it so we can take this thing for a ride and see how fast it is. Let's go! Kind of a cool looking bike. I like this frame and uh, we're gonna go ahead and make the best out of what we got here. We're trying to do this on a budget. I'm making one for myself and one for my wife and we both said we weren't gonna spend more than 120 bucks for our bikes. She had a coupon for hers. Hers was 99, mine was 120 and that was shipped to my front door. Here's where I am in the project so far. I removed this from here off of here. First thing we see here is a guy who looks like maybe he is in the military and he's on an electric bike holding a rifle. There's lots of federal laws about shooting a gun or moving in any kind of vehicle. This is not exactly the best representation of what you're supposed to use this for. Okay, let's get busy. Here we go, box of electronics. Whoa. Yes. 48 volts. Interesting thing about these ones is they don't come with a cassette on it. There is one down here somewhere. This bag is cool. Let's go ahead and get the tire put on this thing. We want to find the hole for the little air hose to go through. So we're gonna hold that in place and then the rest of this just stretches on like a rubber band. My tube is already in here so you can see I've got the little there's the tube. Got a little bit of air in it. Seems like this is the best way to get these things on. I'm gonna go fight with this thing for a minute. Yeah, I need a bench or something for this. Ooh. Here's what you get in this box. This is gonna be your levers for your brake. You get your speed controller. That looks like the throttle. It does come with a tube. So you have a tube for your tire and it comes with that cassette that I was telling you about. When you guys get this kit, buy an extra washer for the axle on this thing because you're gonna need it. This is the washer that I just made right back in here. What was happening is this part of the frame was binding up with this part that needs to be able to spin freely right here on this cassette. So I added another washer, I actually added two just to give it a little bit more room and then I just pulled these, stretched these out just a little bit more. When I'm turning this, that works way better. So I put the gear shifter, I just slid it all the way down to here. Now we're gonna finish up putting on the brakes and the throttle and we can keep wiring this thing up. So let's move forward. Speed controller time. Let's try to get this in the bag and then let's try to figure out how to keep all of these wires in this bag as well. That thing barely fits in there. Everything is color coded or it can only be plugged in one way. So I've got this big chunk coming out and that looks like it's coming from my hub. That plugs into the big one here and there's only one big one like that out of this bunch right here. The brakes, it doesn't matter if it's a left or right, front or back, doesn't matter. And then we have these three wires, which are gonna be the power wires for the hub. Black and red, those are gonna be my two powers. Blue, green, and yellow are right here. So that's these guys. So let's go blue, pop those guys together. And then it's got like a little shielded piece that slides over and seals those up. Yellow, slide that little seal up and over there. Green's right there. Now we need to find the brakes. So here's one brake and here's another brake. And then this is the uh, throttle. Plugging it in the right way so the black side is on the black side and the red side's on the red side. It won't let you plug it in the wrong way anyways. 
One more plug, and that's this big black one. It's a flat one. All the colors match up, we're good. Okay, so I've got that just temporarily set up here so I can test things and make sure everything is there. Now we do have a couple of other cords. One other cord, let me clarify. This is the pedal assist. So as you're pedaling, if you want it to help you pedal, you can set this one up and it will, as you're pedaling, it will actually give you a little boost. I'm not gonna do that because I got a throttle on the thing. So I don't need that. We're not doing that. So let's go ahead and get the battery pack set up with the power ports that I have here, which are red and black. Obviously those are gonna be my two main power lines. And you can tell because these lines are actually huge gauge they're really really thick they're as thick as the uh, ones that are running down to the hub here let's find some power for that we're going to be making this exact plug i love these connectors i always have um, a lot of people like to use these dean's connectors and these aren't bad either um, that's what i'm using on this end of this just to not get anything confused and we're going to want to tin our wires and tinning them is just where you get solder on the end of it so that when you this solder on the end here meets the solder here you get a really good connection we're going to go ahead and make sure that the wires are nice and straight so that they'll fit in those cups when we're done with this sometimes it's a good idea to find something to set down on your wire just to hold it so that you don't get a lot of extra movement and let's commence the tinning of the wire See it right there, how it just jumped up and it filled up that top part. It's exactly what we want. The tin side right here, it's gonna go right there. So the thing you're gonna wanna do is we're gonna heat up this barrel and there's a good idea just to kind of put a little bit of solder on the edge right here. And that's gonna allow more, co or more contact to this barrel right here so that we're actually getting a little more heat into the side of it and then once we get this thing in oh there it goes right there we're going to just fill that cup up about halfway we'll take this wire and it's hot enough it's going to melt that so now this tinned stuff which has already gotten hot and it's already up into all of those little filaments of the wire and that cup now are soldered together and that is a connection that is just not ever going to come undone. So let's get that set up so it's hitting the back sides of this right here. And then I'm going to pull this in. Oh my gosh, I could water ski behind this thing. There it goes. You can hear it pop. That is how you do that. It's not the easy way by any means, but you have to do that with each wire. So you're just kind of pushing pressure on the back here is, and it's holding it like this. And then you're just yanking that wire through. Again, the, the positive side of that is you can see how good that solder joint is. It's really solid. It's never going to come undone. There, you can feel it pop in and now you can see it seated in there just like it's supposed to. I'm gonna show you guys another secret of mine. So we can take these wires, kind of just mash them up together, and then we're gonna do the same principle that we did as far as tinning the tips of the wires. And then we wanna get them as small as we can, so we'll just kind of pinch on them. And now those things are really intertwined. We have a really solid connection in there. And now what I wanna do is just heat this whole thing up and we're gonna just make that one big solder joint. And this is gonna be so solid comparatively to any other way to connect these things. So I'm gonna get this started, feeding a little bit of solder down here on the bottom. There we go. There we go. You can see it kind of lift up into the, the fibers of the There, fill all this in. Nice, good solder on that. And when it gets hot enough, the flux in the solder will automatically just start drawing it into this the connection right there. We're going in positive here. And this is gonna be my positive lead. 
So this is gonna be the positive and negative on the battery, but we're gonna feed out of the negative side into the positive side of this other battery, and then we're gonna come out here. So this output here will actually be 48 volts. So we're going 24, 24, 22.2, I think is what it is actually. And then this is gonna be 48. And that is gonna get us the speed that we want and the power that we want on this bike. You wanna make sure that you tin your wires. We're gonna do the Dean's connections and this is how you are going to get those to be very solid. Don't forget to put your shrink wrap on and then here we go. That one's off since this is still hot. Let's keep that heat rolling in here. Just a stick there. Let's make sure that we're hot enough down here. We've got enough heat to melt some solder, which is good. Hold it still. Let's loosen that up. Oh, that wire's hot. Everything's looking good. Go ahead and hit this with the heat. Just for safety reasons, I feel like I just need to have a backup, like a way to quickly unplug things if I have to. I'd like to have a connection here out in the open, so if I just hold on it, if the batteries did something funny or this was doing something funny, just disconnect everything. My solution is to take the positive and negative here. We're gonna just snip those off. And I am going to do my little trick here with the wires where I kind of blend them together, solder them up, and then I've got shrink wrap on this side right here. So we'll just pull the shrink wrap up and shrink wrap these two together. This wire will come out the bottom of the bag and come up here and I'm gonna make my connection someplace in here to get to the batteries. Just kind of squish them into each other like this and then pinch them down. And then the solder is just gonna hold them there. Clean my solder tip and then we're gonna go ahead and just start getting this thing hot. Always helps to have a little bit of solder, just tin the tip of your soldering iron just to kind of get everything working. It creates a really good connection in the wires. There it goes. You can see that flux just dragging all of that solder right up into the connection here. Okay, so I got my heat gun and we're gonna go ahead and just slide these heat shrink wraps up over the top of these. It's important you wanna try to make sure you get those right in the middle of the connection. If there's stuff like that, there are gonna be little stragglers sometimes that will want to fight you. Don't let them win. Let's make some noise. Whew, that gets hot fast. So now you'll see that this is actually gonna come out the bottom here and give me a little pigtail. So I can string this up and wire it in this way so that I have a line going back to where my battery packs are gonna be. On my wife's bike, I thought about poking a hole in this bag up here so that I could put the wires coming out of that hole. And then I started thinking about if it rained and the water's coming down on this thing and it's dripping down in here, that's a really bad place for water to be. So I think what I'm gonna do is take something like this, maybe do what we did on the other bike and just go straight off of these wires, solder those together, have a longer pigtail come out. So I maybe make something that's 14 inches long or something so it can come in here, connect, and be up here somewhere by the time it goes to connect to the batteries. I've got these wires stripped. Now you can see here that this is probably going to need a little bit of zip tying and some configuring here. Um, but 
At least if it's raining, the rain's gonna come down off of this thing and just drip off this way. It's probably not gonna get into the speed controller. So you can see this isn't like the easiest thing in the world to do, but I think just about anybody could do it if you had the patience and a little bit of money to buy some zip ties and buy a hub a hundred dollar bike or a two hundred and twenty dollar bike whatever it takes um it, it wasn't really that hard and i would say it's totally worth it i mean i had fun doing it and uh i get to ride an electric bike all summer so now i just got to talk about battery packs and getting into maybe some of that in another video if this was helpful at all and you like this content at all please hit that subscribe button if you like the video hit the thumbs up and you'll see me in the next video